We've got some fresh hey, new I'm young Luis. talent. And I'm, I'm Luis. And you're listening to the content before. is Profit One, two, Podcast. Three. And we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn how to turn the content into profit, just go to contentsprofit.com. There's a surprise in there for you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, baby. I'm so excited for today. Tell me, we tell have me more. A tell very me why. special guest. And we're going to be talking about how to build a movement Ooh. with the number one morning show on Facebook. Ooh, hashtag rise and grind, baby. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Ooh. It is a movement, guys. We've been indoctrinated in that movement not so long ago by our friend Marley Jacks was the introduction to the show, and I've been completely addicted. I've listened uh, in Clubhouse, on Facebook, in Instagram, is the in question, the audio. Do you listen Everywhere. to it live? Are you waking up at 5 a.m.? No. No, but hold on. I'm working my way I, into okay, it. My goal I'm working is my way for into the, it. For the end of this episode, we're going to have to make uh, some sort of commitment. I, all right. I, I got the commitment. I got the commitment. No, no, I'm going to... End of the episode. I know. I'm going to right. I'm gonna tell our guests what a commitment is. All right. Cool, and I don't cool, know if cool. you're going to like it or not, but let's see. All right. All right cool. Fancy, do we have a sponsor today? Indeed, we do. Thank you for asking, you're good welcome. sir. You're welcome. And today's sponsor is your own the best bros <sighs> yeah we sponsor our own episodes that is right that's right with guys. content that's momentum mm. and you might be asking yourself what is content momentum well if you produce a long form piece of content just like this one that you're listening to or watching and you need a modern media team to come into your business and help you leverage your efforts and your yes. content so, so then you can use it as little minions in social media to help you get some yes. more clients then we want to help you out slide in the dms at biz bros co on facebook on instagram good job fancy that was good appreciate it all right don't and, and follow the show too we have incredible interviews three times a week live and three times a week on the audio form your favorite podcasting platform so go ahead and follow the show and social media at biz bros co because all these golden boulders are gonna go there and you can catch the few the few no, the many, the many, the many, the many pieces of content. The few, that is awesome right, guys. Ah, whatever. And yes, let's go. If you find today's episode valuable, which I am 120%, you will. If today's guests help you move one step forward closer to your goal, please don't forget to share this episode because you might be able to help somebody else do the same. And, and please leave a five star review. Thank you. Happy Monday. We are back. And today we have a very special guest. He might be the ultimate morning hype man across the entire internet. If you are part of the 5 a.m. club, you might know who we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Today's guest has one of the most engaging communities on the internet. He is the host of Breakfast with Champions on Clubhouse and of the morning show Rise and Grind, which has over 800 episodes complete madness guys that is insane he has been featured in abc nbc cbs and probably any other network that has a c in their name like cip aka content is profit coincidence much <laughs> that's right guys he is also he also has grown a dealership eight 100% raised over $800,000 and more for a nonprofit. But most importantly, he is an incredible father of eight children. Huh? Feeling that this might be the favorite number. Hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling number eight might be his favorite <laughs> number, right? And guess what? This is episode 161. That if we sum the digits, one plus six plus one, guess what? what? Is number eight. Is that um, my, what? My, what? I, and I'm just going to throw this out there. <laughs> this we was, we the, actually rescheduled the, the, the uh, first time we're going to bring him on the show for him to land on episode 161. Hey, I think it is. It, it, it's something that we needed to, you know, put a pin on. Yes. And yes. I, I actually Googled the meaning of number eight. Oh. And it means infinity. Right. Oh, baby. So let's is go. this going to be an infinite relationship, the one we're building here oh, today? Oh, baby, let's We go. will see. Either way, please welcome host of Rise and Grind, host of Breakfast with Champions, and the ultimate internet hype man, Glenn Lundy. What's up, Glenn? What up, what up, what up, what up? My God. <laughs> Goodness, you guys are fantastic, man. Super excited to be here with you this morning. I do have to make one quick correction, though, because you said he might be the number one hype man in the morning. I am 
the yes, number one yes, hype man yes. in the morning. Ain't no might be about it, brother. It's me. <laughs> yes, hey, I love it. That, uh, that is the uh, confidence uh, we're looking for. Let's oh, go. Dude, Glenn, we're, we're extremely excited to have you here on the on the show. We've been following for, for quite a bit. And, uh, you know, like we mentioned in there, Marley was the introduction to your world. And I'm like, wow, the, the energy, the community that you guys have been able to build, uh, you know, ah, it's, so, it's so good. So how, how this like morning 5 a.m. like streaming like slash business was the streaming first? Was the business first? Your entrepreneurial story? Like how did it all start? <laughs> so check it out, man. I was in the automotive world, kicking butt, taking names. Uh, we, we grew this dealership in this small town 800% over a period of six years. And part of the way we were able to grow that dealership was utilizing social media. And so I was on social media every day, every day, every day, every day, creating content, creating content, engaging people. And it was working from a marketing side. There was a dark side, though. Because mm -hmm. every single time I was on social media, I was seeing like shootings and division and racism and politics and all of this stuff. And so it was interesting, man. I hit this point where I was really frustrated with the Internet. I was like, golly, it's so dang negative. Why has it got to be so negative up in here? This is crazy. And so what I've learned in my life, gentlemen, is that if something like really bothers you, Like, if it really bothers you, right? Like, makes you sick to your stomach. Mm. That's God's way of saying, dude, don't just talk about it. Be about it. Like, go do something about it. You know what I'm saying? And so I kept getting really upset about negativity online. And I was like, all right, Glenn, let's just create a space. We cannot fix all the division and crazy and negative online. Yeah. But let's create a space, a small little tiny corner of the internet That'll be nothing but motivation, education, and inspiration. There'll never be anything negative. There'll be no news. There'll be no division. There'll be no politics, no racism, none of, none of that. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, let's create that space. Then the business side of me was like, ooh, this could be good. Because <laughs> if we can release this positivity out into the universe, that'll look good for the dealership as well. So we can draw more people in. We can yes. attract and recruit some new hires. Like it'll be good for the dealership social media content on that side. And then the other part of my brain, the self-development part of my brain was like, bro, first thing in the morning, that's when people are like the most impacted, their minds consuming the most information. So I was like, well, if we can take some positivity mix it with a little bit of marketing and mix it with some self-development strategies to change the way people start their day, dude, we can Ooh. make a massive impact with this thing. Hmm. And so I took the three pieces together, right? We started doing this show and here's how I would start it off. I would say, my name is Glenn Lundy. I'm a husband to one, <laughs> a father to back then it was like five and then six and then seven. And then eight, right? <laughs> But I'm a husband to one, a father to five. The general manager of Dan Cummins Chevrolet and Buick in Paris, Kentucky, the second largest used car franchise dealership in America. <laughs> It's 5.30 a.m. And I hope you're ready to rise and grind. And so I started every oh, so episode good. that same way, just marketing, marketing. That, that was the hook. That was the jingle, right? And so people started saying, yeah, Dan Cummins Chevrolet, the number two you know, dealership in America. Good morning, good morning, <laughs> good morning. And over time, man, it just it just blew up, bro. It became uh, the show. You know, People started following the show, and then they wanted a group, so we created a group, and then they wanted T-shirts, so we started creating T-shirts, and then they wanted planners, so we started making planners, and then they wanted coffee, we started doing coffee, and then they wanted like off-site events, we started doing off-site events, and a business was literally created around uh, just a little positivity in the morning, man. Pretty crazy, uh, right? Wow. I love it. I love how it all like started fitting itself. I love how you discovered it. I love that what you said about like when you have that feeling in your gut, that's when you need to to go for it. I think a lot of people sometimes, many times actually, get that feeling in their gut, but then they're like, it's the, the opposite. It's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do anything, right? I, I, I think people take signals in a in a very different way has it been like that for you all your life has it been where you feel that something in your gut and you're like let me attack it or was there a moment in your life where that perspective changed for you yeah man i used to live what i call a 2d life mm. right mind and body 
mind the body. If it looked good and it felt good, the answer was yes. <laughs> if it looked bad and it felt bad, the answer was no. It was simple as that, right? And that's the way I used to live my life. And ultimately living my life that way led me to burning a lot of bridges, taking advantage of a lot of people. I was a liar. I was a cheat. I was a thief. I was in and out of jail. And ultimately I ended up homeless on the streets of San Diego, living this two dimensional life, right? Mind and body. And yeah. so in that season of my life, if I had a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach, right? Like I associated that with something bad's going to happen. I'm a victim in this world, so on and so forth. I had this yeah. very physical reaction to, uh, to those types of things. Yeah. So it wasn't until I got out of that season of life and I actually realized that we are three dimensional, not two dimensional mind, body, and spirit. So if it looks good and it feels good and it is good, now the answer is yes. yes. If it looks yeah. good, feels good, but it's not good, the answer is no. And so once I was able to really tap into the spiritual side of myself and understand, you know, the, the third dimension to this thing called life, that's when I started to understand that that mm. gut feeling can be interpreted. That's, that's your soul. And it can be guiding you in a direction, pulling you out of the despair, pulling you out of the pits, pulling you away from an opportunity for you to be a victim and instead leading you to the places where you can be a victor. So now I listen to my intuition. I listen to my gut a lot more than I used to. I don't just assume it's something bad or negative. Uh, instead, I look at it and go, okay, where's the spirit trying to lead me today? And if it, if it, if it sticks, bro, I lean in, yes. I lean in, you know? Uh, I love it. I I, I want to distill something too at the at the marketer level on the business side of things. You you mentioned it. I mean, you started a, and you mentioned the, that gut feeling, right? It felt good. Like this is what what I what I need to do uh, for the people around me, right? Like we always we all have been in that dark hole of social media, of content, or different things, right? And uh, it, it's a shame that it's so loud, right? But it's also a blessing that there's so many people taking action against that and creating their positive footprints in the internet, right? But after that, you started gathering this incredible community of action takers and people that want to take on the world and share your message, right? And then they started requesting different things, right? And, and we talk about this on the show and be like, what are the solutions that they might want or need or like to elevate their day, to elevate, you know, the impact that they're creating? And you mentioned t-shirts, coffee, pot. You know, I, I, I see you, I, I, I hear you read this quote every single day from one of the people that submitted their quotes for the planners. I thought that was wonderful, right? You you also you. brought that experience into, into the community and I'm sure those people like feel so, so good, right? And and they're going to be with you till the end of days, right? And not just them, but the people that are actually using that that uh, vehicle, that planner to, to move their day along. So on the business side of things, right? Like when we say content is profit, there's many layers to that, right? And, and this is something that, that we need to do as a business, right? Like we need to listen to our audience. We need to listen to the people that we serve to help them serve better, right? Like recently we went through this uh, transformational moment in our, in our in our business, right? Like after a year uh, of craziness and, and for us it meant everything because the show started, we started developing that, that community aspect and we started serving. We started listening to the people that were coming in and, and uh, we started implementing and that's wonderful. So a lot of people that come in, they're like, my thing, my thing, my thing. Well, what about them, right? What's in it for them? That's something that Fonsi says all the time and you execute it perfectly, right? Like, and, and it's moving forward and it's, I'm sure there's like little hiccups here and there, but I'm sure your community comes out and, and lends you a hand many times. Now, no doubt. for reference, how long have you been doing it? We mentioned 800 episodes, right? Like, and uh, for one of the shows, 72 plus for the other one, right? Like, how long have you been doing this, right? Because uh, we want to bring this into perspective for people that are trying to tackle this thing. <laughs> uh, the first episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind was on January 6th of 2018. So yeah. we're three years and three months in. Yes. We've done 856 episodes wow. as of this morning. Uh, every day, Monday through Friday, 5.30 a.m., crazy that's incredible <laughs> i i, I, so I love it <laughs> for a second there, i thought you were gonna say eight years you know since we're on the topic of number eight <laughs> but it's okay i mean I, I think three years make it even more impressive yeah, um yeah, yeah. and for me the impressive part is the commitment man the commitment that you've done to show up every single day for for these people right and a lot of times we 
when we're talking to the people that we're trying to help, we're like, you need to look for accountability, right? For me, the best courses online, the best masterminds are the ones that offer the best support and accountability, right? They could have right. the best content in the world, but if they're not helping people take action, it's not the best court in the, uh, course in the, in the world, right? And you offer that every single day at 5.30 in the morning. How did that thought came about? How did you used to wake up at 5.30 before? Or you were like, you know what? I'm also going to use this community <laughs> to hold me accountable to get up early as well and rise and grind. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit of both. But really, the time. So once I decided, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a show. I'm going to do it every day. It's going to be motivation, education, inspiration, right? I'm going to do it every day, Monday through Friday. And then I was like, okay, so what time? Can I make sure that I'm not going to be anywhere? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have any appointments. Like, it has to be a time that I can commit, right? A lot of times people are like, I'm going to do a show at 11 a.m. every single day. Dude, by 11 a.m., are you kidding me? You got doctor's appointments. The whole world's coming at you. Like, there's so many things that get in the way. So I was like, okay, maybe we could do 7 a.m., right? That'd be good. 7 a.m., mm -hmm. I got to be working at 8.30. And then I was like, wait. My kids are already up at 7 a.m. I got a lot of kids. Get there ain't on. no way that's going to happen. So I was like, well, maybe I could do 6.30. And I was like, no, you know, the wife's up at 6.30. I start getting emails from my employees. Like, that's not going to work. And I was like, what about 6 o'clock? I was, I was trying to talk myself into it yeah. at a later time. And ultimately, I ended up backing down to like 5.30 was the only time that I knew for a fact I would not have any appointments. My employees wouldn't be bothering me yet or reaching out for help in any way. My kids weren't going to be rocking and rolling. My wife wasn't going to be up. So it was the only time that I could commit to. So episode one, I woke up at like 526 a.m., right? And I'm like, 530, I got like the lights on. I'm in this little tiny <laughs> utility closet. I set the camera up. The water heater's behind the camera. You can't see the water heater. And I put some sound stuff on the back so it looks like I was up. And then I put this chalkboard right here. This is this was my chalkboard. Yeah. So utility closet, six feet wide, eight feet long, and me. And the lights are on, and I'm like, ah, it's so bright. What is this? This is crazy. I can't do it, right? Like, yeah. it was nuts, episode one. And then there was episode two, and then episode five, and then episode 10. And it, I started waking up at 5.15 instead of 5.26. And then I, 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 I started, you know, getting feedback from people that it was making a difference. And so I started waking up at five o'clock instead of 5.15. And I started like creating some structure to it and making sure there was a rhythm and that it kind of flowed and that we hit certain points and making sure to engage the audience and really give them an experience. And then the mm -hmm. production side started to come in with better cameras and mm -hmm. better music. And then I had to start getting up at 4.45 and then it was 4 30 and then it was 4 15 and then it was four o'clock and now i get up at 3 20 a.m wow. every day um, i spend the first 30 minutes of the day in uh you know writing down my gratitude and my goals like taking care of myself foundationally and then at about 3 50 i write the words good morning on a pad of paper i've got a hundred of them Book, little books just like this And I just write the words, good morning, at the top. As you can see, I can open to just about any page. Oh, yeah. And wow. I write, and as soon as I write the words, good morning, I literally just pause and I, I look up. I don't know if you guys are faithful people or not. I am. And I look up and I say, okay, what's the message today? Yeah. And then I write from 3.50 a.m. till 4.20 a.m. I write. And then at 4.20, I pack up my backpack. I jump in my truck. And I drive over to my, I leave the house at 4.30 and I drive to my now studio, which is, uh, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit different nice. than, uh, yes. than the utility closet. Yeah. No, no water we, heater behind the camera. No water here. For, for those listening guys, go check out the video because it's showing us the, the couple cameras, the setup, the incredible background and the, the first chalkboard. Uh, And a few other things we see there. So, you know, well. yeah, we keep the chalkboard here. <laughs> Now we have the big studio. We've got people that have signed the walls and multiple sound mixers and mics. And you guys know how it is because you're in the podcast <laughs> world. And, yeah. and and so I leave the house at, at 4.30 and I come to the big studio and I get here at 4.50. And then I go into my wire cast and I do a full production, man. Three yeah. cameras, B-roll, nice. music, everything. And come 5.30... 
people are like, dude, how do you have all that energy at 5.30? I'm like, bro, I've already been up for two hours and 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Of course I have more energy than you. You just got yeah. out of bed. I've been rocking. I'm almost ready for lunch by yeah. the time you guys get in here. Right? Yeah. And so, awesome. but it's such a, I love it, man. Yeah. I love it. And so my life has been completely adjusted around it. The show holds me accountable. Yeah. I hold people on the show accountable. And together, we've been able to really make a dent in the universe. And I'm excited to continue to do so moving forward. Oh, that is exciting. I, I do have a question. At what time do you go to sleep? <laughs> 11 p.m. You go to sleep at 11 p.m. and wake up at 3.30 every day? Wow. Yeah, I sleep four hours and 20 minutes. And, and, and that's a whole other story. Yeah. I did a whole study. And I learned my yeah. sleep cycles. Yeah. And once you learn your sleep cycles, it's like a superpower, bro. So my sleep cycles are two hours and 10 minutes. So yeah. I can do 210, 420, 630, or 840. I can do any of those and feel 100% rested. Interesting. So depending on where I am in the world, yeah. sometimes I sleep a little longer, sometimes a little less. But when I'm home, it's four hours and 20 minutes every single night. Wow. I'm going to have to do one of those, those studies. That, that's been a feel... discussion that we've had, right? Yeah. Like operationally, right? Sometimes you feel down. Sometimes you don't. You're like, what, why? And, you know, we've been learning more and more about this stuff. And uh, that's interesting. to me, it's, it's six, six and a half. Six and a half, it, it's it's where I feel like the the greatest. And he's like, how can you do that? Yeah, like, I'm a, oh. I'm a deep, deep sleeper, but maybe it's because I don't know my sleep cycles, right? I need it's all about the cycles. My yep. guess, if you're six and a half, so I'm a six and a half too, right? Yeah. That's, that's three, two hour and 10 minute cycles. So all human being cycles are between two and three hours from light sleep to deep sleep to light sleep between two and three hours for all human beings. Yeah. So if you're, if you feel great at six 30, you would also feel great at four hours and 20. You would also feel great at two hours and 10. And you would also feel great at eight hours and 40. Like mm, you would yes. feel great at any of those. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes when I'm on the West coast and I got to do a show, I got to stay up and entertain. Right. And then I get back to the hotel. I'll actually stay up later instead mm. of going to bed and sleeping three hours. because yeah. I know I'll be groggy. I'll stay up later, sleep exactly two hours and 10 minutes, wake up ready to go. It's freaking superpower. It's yes. awesome. Wow. I Interesting. I'm yeah. going to try that. I need to figure yeah. out which one's mine. I want you waking up at three next morning. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I want yeah. you to test it okay. out right Okay, now. boss. Uh, He's into it. Yeah, He's into, it. He's into th it. Thank you. Yeah. He's like, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a doctor. It's, uh, this is not my, uh, anyways, uh, dude, Glenn, I, I think this is wonderful, right? Because yeah. I mean, you, you, what you described is what we call kind of frictionless execution, right? You start it. Your minimal viable show. Mm -hmm. How can I get it going, right? How can I move it, right? And then it evolved, right? Like you started identifying these these points where you needed to pivot a little bit and make a change on your daily routine to move move up a little bit a couple hours. Right now you have a you have a primer that's that writing that good morning in your in your journal, right? And like, okay, what's what's coming? I'm sure like a lot of content creators out there is like, how do I come up with content? Right? That's a question that we often see like for us uh, we solve that problem on content creation with interviews we connect with incredible people and we ask questions and then from there that's our primer to many other things that come after right but that's sure. incredible that you came up with your own system right so how will you what like what will you advise to people that might be starting their own platforms their own their own shows their own uh streaming right Uh, to, to get us started off the ground and then from there where are the next like maybe one or two steps that they might want to keep an eye out Yeah, the first thing when it comes to, you know, if you're going to create a podcast or so or, or so on and so forth, like really take a look in the mirror and, and ask yourself, why? Why are you creating a, a, a podcast? If you're yeah. creating a podcast because you want to make a bunch of money, dude, put it away. Don't even start. It's mm -hmm. not uh, that you're not going to get there just chasing the dollars. It's not mm -hmm. it's not how it works. If you're creating a podcast because you want to save everyone in the world, just don't. Dude, just don't like seriously like no offense i love you and i love your heart but i don't need you to save me i really don't i need i don't i don't need you to save me i, need, I might need you to motivate me i might need you to educate me i might need you to uh inspire me but i don't need you to save me so the save the world podcast deal like throw that out the window <laughs> yeah. now if you look in the mirror and you're like you know what i have a voice and my message that i can deliver needs to be heard I can make an impact, a positive mm -hmm. impact in other people's lives through my message, my experience, my story, 
And if that's what you feel called to do is to let that story out in the world, do nothing better than podcasting, right? You can use your voice. It's easier than writing a book. Writing a book can be hard. It's easier to, to distribute than writing a book. Uh, it's, it's great. So first get pure with your heart. And if it's about you delivering the message that's been stamped on your soul, now you're, now you're getting somewhere because that level of connection mm. not on, of you to the content, not only will that come through to where your audience will see that it's authentic, you're not just trying to make money, you're not yes. trying to save the whales, but you're actually connecting with you, right? Your audience will see that authenticity and it will, it will grow. Also, that authentic connection to your story, your message, the things that's been stamped on your soul is what's going to get you through all the technical difficulties, get mm. you through the frustration of nobody listening to your stuff for months and months and months <laughs> on end, right? It's going to get you through the frustration points because it will be so like it takes a level of passion to yeah. be truly successful yeah. in the podcast world. You got to create a lot of content. It takes a really long time. And so yeah. start there, look in the mirror, make sure that there's a true, true, true connection. And then, uh, you know, secondly from that, just really, when it comes to creating content, right? You said a lot of people are like, what, what, what kind of content? First of all, if it's connected to your heart, you're going to find more content. Let's start there. Second of all, become a freaking student. Like, be a student. So mm -hmm. my show, when I first started it for the first, I don't know, probably 400 episodes, it was like just daily, what are we going to talk about? Like, and I would just get a message, I talk about it. Then I was like, okay, let's do this better. Let's be more professional. Let's create a theme for the week. Mm -hmm. Now, I still like to write the show daily because I want it to be relevant where where I'm at headspace in that moment otherwise when I deliver it it's flat and it's dry yeah so I always write the show same day I always do that but I have a theme for the week so my themes are mapped out for the for the year right I do that at the in December of the previous year I write, I map out so I've got 52 topics now sometimes we change those if things change in the world but yeah. at least I have some sort of a, a a theme of a general idea right yeah but anytime I get stuck and I'm like oh I don't know what to write right anytime I get stuck that tells me I'm not learning mm. I'm not growing mm. I need to read more books I need to watch more documentaries I need to study other people that are successfully doing the things that I can, that I do. I need to be inspired myself because ultimately we don't know what we don't know. So right now I'm on a terror, man. Like last week we did a whole series around the souls code, which was a book that uh, a recent book that I read. That's just this phenomenal, weird way of looking at life. <laughs> the week before that, we did a whole series around the miracle mentality, which is Tim Story's newest bestseller. Right now, I'm reading a book called Drop the Mic by T.D. Jakes. I'm sure I'll do a whole week around that particular thing. So yeah. if you're running out of content, it's because you're not growing as a human. So read, learn, yes. study, and the content will come. So those uh, would be my tips one and two. Incredible. Uh, See, I, I mean, that's the secret sauce right yes. there. I, I, I love Not so secret sauce. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's out there, right? Like, oh, so good. Thank I, you. Glenn, yeah, sure. what, what you just shared. You literally gave the the key to people to unlimited content, right? And right. it's not a coincidence. You're actually the second person that tells be a student in in this podcast. The, the first one was Todd Brown. I don't know if you remember when he came here. He's like, be a student, and he emphasized it as much as you did. And we were like, <laughs> be it? a student, yes. writing a huge right here, <laughs> the pen and paper. And I just wrote down the same thing, right? If you are not learning. That's when, when you're stuck, right? If you're stuck, it's because you're not learning. And that is so key, right? Because a lot of people just think it's about producing, producing, producing. But guess what? The quality of your inputs determine the quality of your outputs, right? And oh, sometimes yeah. you're just going to be... The, the consumption sometimes is just on your phone, scrolling on Instagram, and we are not very aware of what we are consuming in there, right? We might just be consuming... Uh, I mean, I'm doing here, it was like trash, right? And what's right. going to come out is not going to be the the goodness, right? What we call hashtag golden boulders. Ooh. And I am looking now at the moments that I've been stuck. And I realize it's because I've 
stop that learning, right? I, maybe I stopped reading the book for that I was reading for a few days, or I got complacent with certain things and I, st- I stopped doing it. So that is such an important key right there. And yeah, thank you so much. The other thing that flew, that I think it flew a little bit under the radar in the previous comment that I want people to, to understand as well, and it goes hand in hand with the minimal viable uh, production that you put on at first, is that you said the production came after, right after a few episodes, I started building my production. And we always tell people, quality of the message over quality of the production. Because yes, it looks amazing, and we all wanna have the nice, dandy quality content that we can put out there. But guess what? If, if our message doesn't resonate with the person on the other side, they're gonna either change the channel, go look for somebody else, and they're gonna forget about you. So it no is doubt. so more it like is so much more important to dive into your message, be passionate, like you said, be passionate about what you're talking about, share about that, learn how to share and communicate your thoughts, and eventually the production is gonna catch up to that and it's gonna look nice and dandy. So Dude, thank my, you so my much. Friend, I've got a friend, her name's Danelle Delgado. She's a very good friend of mine, a mentor of mine. Danelle does a show called Friday Night Live on Facebook. She has done Friday Night Live every Friday for like six years. Wow. Awesome. Dude, it is her and a cell phone. And then she has another <laughs> cell phone. She has another cell phone that she like plays a little bit of music. At the start of each one, she's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, all right, everybody get in here. And that's it, dude. It's her and a cell phone. She has built her business is now doing like 15 million a year wow. off of this Friday night live with a stinking cell phone, brother. Like, wow. The, I like the production stuff because that's kind of like my jam. Like, mm-hmm. I, I like it. I enjoy telling yes. stories a certain way, uh, but it definitely is not a requirement in any way, shape or form. I can have the greatest production in the world, but if my content doesn't hit... And really, it's not even about my content being great. It's like you mentioned earlier, which some of the audience might have might have went a little bit under the radar. (laughs) You mentioned earlier the connectivity of the content that the audience has to connect with it. You said that somebody can be of a great they can have a great masterclass. But if you don't feel connected to it, then it's not the best masterclass, right? Mm -hmm. It's the one where you're held accountable, where you really feel inspired and connected to that person that's speaking. And so Danelle is a master at connectivity. That's what she's been able to build her business off of is she connects with her people like on a deep level. Mm -hmm. No freaking. You better watch out, dude. Ah. Talk bad about Danelle Delgado. <laughs> They'll come take out your kneecaps. There you are not <laughs> playing. I'm about to go check out that that show Friday Night Live. We're gonna have to check it out. I know that's yeah. like yeah, a, yeah, fun, yeah. Fun, I'll fun. tell her to come do you guys a show too. You'll love you'll you want uh, to interview her. Th- thank, thank you, you so you. much. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, sh- should we do it on Friday? No, no I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> Friday afternoon. Fr- Friday, Friday afternoon, afternoon live. The pre. The appreciate. I was recently was listening to the show uh, Business Wars. I'm not sure if if you if you if you heard that show but they go through a series of episodes and they had the late night talk show wars basically so tonight tonight show late night show whatever and and the whole pol- politics of all of that so um and now i'm like i want to go talk to her because that might have been an inspiration for her. who knows maybe i don't know yeah. but it, it was incredible like how these networks started publishing and all the 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 thing that goes around this production when yeah. today in today days and day and age we have the accessibility and it's so frictionless to go mm. out and share our message and create such an impact right we yeah. don't have to be on these networks that it, we used to Fancy has that term that the tiny timeline that uh, was it that shows a huge opportunity uh that's <laughs> hilarious the presentation that we did on that but it shows that right and today people like like you glenn and, and like her and like many others right are creating this impact with with your voice with your message and like you said tools do not matter. They help at some degree, at some point. And, if, and like you said, if you enjoy it, sweet. Like for yeah. us, our team has been like on us to get a better camera. They, they're like, 
guys, please do it, right? We can do so much more. I'm like, okay, well, that adds friction to our operation. We just want to go out and execute, right? Like there's a process that, that the show has to follow for us to be able to do this, right? Yeah. If that adds friction, then we're going to stop and then everything stops. And we don't want things to stop, so we got to continue right. executing. I, actually, when we started... We were about to, you know, we, we had this idea of driving our parents down to the airport. We're from, from Venezuela, South America, and we're driving them down. And yeah. we were like, what if we start a podcast? Like, all the cool people have a podcast. We should start a podcast too, right? Because we're this, cool people? Uh, at this, m yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Or we, we were, yeah, cool wannabes. But, you know, at this point, our business didn't have like a focus either. We were like no, all over all the over. place. Yeah. So we decided to invest in the equipment that you see today, right? We're like, if we invest, we're going to do it. There's no other way, right? So yeah. we invested in the mics. We have the roadcaster here. And at that moment, we're doing a 30-day challenge. So the idea was, look, watch the 30-day challenge, then do a recap as a podcast. But guess what? We wanted it to have the massive quality production. So we were living in a two-bedroom apartment, and we set up two video cameras, a light, because I was doing videography at the moment, and just setting up everything took us about an hour every single time that we were trying to record, right? right. Second, it was in my room, so the bed was like right in the middle of the, the bedroom. Every time my girlfriend would come home, she's like, oh, what are you guys doing in here? <laughs> I was like, I promise, babe, it's a podcast. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a porn set. It's, like, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a nope, podcast. Nope. <laughs> and the other thing, we were recording now at like 12 p.m. and we decided to call the show Bruce and Bros, right? And it was so much friction. We recorded four episodes, if I'm not mistaken. We've never edited any of the four episodes because the cameras had a 20-minute timer because they're DSLRs. So we had to, in the middle of the episode, get up, press record on the other one, and then get up on the other one. And, and we have to stitch things. Such a pain, so much friction that we never yeah. got to publish anything. We stored the equipment in the closet for a year. One full year before we actually got it to take out again and start doing the show again. And when we started, it we're like, how can we remove all friction? Let's just do it live. We have a webcam. We can plug this, fortunately, USB uh, to the computer. And that's it. We just remove the whole friction. And now we are in episode 161. So... <laughs> oh, you got a mushroom there, bro. Cool. No, uh, no? I, think, okay. I, think I, forgot, I, I think I forgot to breathe. I think I forgot uh, to breathe. That's awesome, man. Uh, Episode 161, which adds up to eight, like you said earlier. But that's right. No, that's impressive, man. You're right, dude. Remove the friction and let's go, right? Yep. Let's go. 100%. I'm with you. So, Glenn, obviously, I mean, it, this has been just a, a gem of an episode. Thank you so much for, for sharing your, your message where uh, you yeah, go. The time just flew by, bro. That's I, awesome. I, I know. It's like, well, what? Uh, we're like part two at some point, please. Uh, for <laughs> yeah. sure. So I'm just going to extend the invitation, put you on the spot. So whatever. You don't have to answer right now. You can answer after. Yeah, go, no. The answer's no. Yeah, okay. No, Tom, sounds good. Guys, some, sometimes no, we need to kidding, listen man. to of course. <laughs> of course, man. Of course. Uh, I'd love to, to hang out with you guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> well, before we leave, I do have have a, a, a question. We're not, we're not leaving. We have two more questions. Fonzie. Yeah, well, before the two okay. questions. Come on, the, the to two. wrap it up, you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Glenn, what are those signatures in the back? Are those people that go and record live in your place with you? So these are just anybody that's visited my, my studio. So uh, Rising Grind members, people that have supported me over the years, and, and they'll, they'll, you know, anybody, they'll, they'll be passing through Kentucky. They'll stop by. Uh, we'll take a photo. I give them the silver pin, and 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 they sign the wall. So everybody up on the wall is, you know, mentors, coaches, supporters, people that have bought products. They swing by to buy a product. I'm like, you gotta sign the wall. Come on, get on in here. Because yeah. I want everyone to feel like a freaking superstar. When like, that's why we do what we do. And so I give them a silver pin, and, our, and my camera guy comes in, and we snap a bunch of photos, and they feel like freaking you know j-lo yes. or, or <laughs> Jay Z, right they feel like one of those jays when they're when they're in my office and so that's what we created that space for is to to be able to allow people to feel like a million bucks right? ah, that's awesome i love it just so you know like the one that says taco has been like calling me all interview i'm like who signs as taco that is so cool yeah that is sarah ball her name is sarah ball she's a rising grind member been with us a little over a year her life has completely transformed wow. since she became a part of our group. 
Uh, she was living overseas. Long story short, she moved over here to the States and uh, the Rise and Grind family has taken her and her boys in and supported her in everything that they do. So and uh, she's just a rock star. Like she's a rock star without putting her name up there. So yeah. she's just yes. phenomenal. That's amazing. I, I love how you are so caring about your community, man. And, you know, the few episodes that I've that I've heard you're calling out the names of the people that are tuning in and some of them you remember you know like certain things that they've shared with you and i think that is so so important and it's a piece that so many people miss mm. which is care about the person on the other side right is that that was in it for them and you are the the perfect example for yeah. that Man, how does... oh, well, thank you, man. I, I, I'll when it comes to that, I'll tell people this: like, if you're creating a podcast for yourself, like, so you can hear yourself talk, like back in the day, they used to call that crazy. They would put you in a straight jacket, like if you were just sitting there <laughs> talking <laughs> to, yourself. to yourself. You know, now we call it podcasting, but you're <laughs> supposed to talk to someone, yeah. talk to an audience, man. Pretend like there's someone on the other line, even when there's not. And one extra little tip that I'll give just since we're on these notes is remember that most people listen to podcasts by themselves. I have not seen, I mean, maybe they exist, but I have yet to be invited to a podcasting party. Hey guys, let's all go hang out at the house and listen to a podcast. I've never <laughs> heard that, right? Yeah. Like people listen to a podcast when they're by themselves. So when you're speaking to the audience, let me rephrase that. When you're speaking to, I guess that's the way I'm trying to rephrase that. Don't speak to an audience. Speak to that one individual that's on the other side listening because they're listening by themselves. Nothing I hate more, especially like on a Facebook Live. Somebody, you go on a Facebook Live and uh, somebody's like, Okay, so uh, hey guys, how are how's everybody? Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna wait for a few more people to get in here, and I'm like, I'm not waiting for nothing. Am I not enough for you? Why do you need more people? And who's yeah. guys? I'm here all by myself. <laughs> I'm on the toilet right now, all by, all alone. There's no you guys around. Talk to me, dude. Talk to me. Yes, See yes, yes. just me. Uh. That's how you. That's how you create connection. Yeah, by, oh, by the I way, gu guilty of that. So from today on, Fonzie, new, new bar has set in the show. We cannot say that. So we got to control so that because yeah. we've identified ourselves as some, and, and it became a habit, right? It does become a habit. It's like one of those it things does. that comes out, right? So yes, thank you so much. So that that's our homework for sure. And uh, for everybody out there too, like same, same for you, for you listening, for you, for you. <laughs> have, it have, it yes, have it start now. For you, this is the habit that you need to build. Oh, so good. Okay. <laughs> Glenn. Dude, it's a game changer. I'm telling you, even when you write your post, if you write your post to one person instead of to group, you get far more engagement. Mm -hmm. Talk to one. Talk to I one. love it. Talk to I, one. I have this shirt, Glenn, that is a uh, one-to-one -one ratio, pretty much. And yeah. the, the, the meaning behind it is actually uh, one, the one-to-one -one ratio of consuming and creation, right? Like as I'm consuming, I'm creating as well. But now you're just giving it another another meaning. It's the one to one it. relationship that you should have when creating that content. Cool. That's it, brother. That's it. I love yeah. that. All, All right, right. Lance. So, so to wrap up, well, for, before the last two questions, this this can be quick. How, how do you feel when you do all this, man? How do you how do you feel? Oh, it's awful, man. It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> um, bro, it's uh, it's such a gift, man. I am so grateful that we live in 2021. And, um, you know, again, not to like, I'm a spiritual person. All right. And I want to be clear with, with you, the listener, even if you're not necessarily like, a follower of, of Jesus or Christianity, totally cool. Like I love you a hundred percent. However, I am also a student and the best selling book of all time mm. is the Bible. And that book has sold 3.6 billion copies. Okay. To give you an idea of the second best selling book is the Harry Potter series. They come in at 700 million. Mm. Okay. 700 million versus 3.6 billion. So even if you don't like, take the spiritual stuff side out or the religious side out, you should read this book. Clearly yes, yes. it's impactful, right? And so when I study the most successful human in history, this guy named Jesus, when I study him and I watch what he had to go through mm. in order to get an audience of 20, 
hmm. or an audience of 40, right? He'd have to get up, dust off his sandals, put on a dirty robe, jump on a donkey or a camel or something, mm -hmm. right? Travel through the desert, yeah. face mm -hmm. starvation and people like ready to kill him or beat him or hang him or whatever. He would hit dust storms and climb it and, and attack of savage animals, right? And he would do this for miles and miles and miles to be able to get to a small little village to have an audience of 30 people so that he could share a message of hope. And here we are in 2021, where I don't even have to be wearing pants right now in my air conditioned unit mm -hmm. where I can literally just push a button and I have an opportunity to reach 7 billion people on this planet. Yes. What a gift. So you ask, how do I feel when I do this? I feel so grateful. So, so grateful to live in a time where it has never been easier to inspire, to motivate, to share, to encourage, to educate, to really make an impact in other people's lives. Straight mm -hmm. gratitude, bro, oh. all the way through my career. I love it, I love it. And, and that that is such yeah. a important trait that I've seen across the board uh, on successful people is gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it just, But back to that topic of flying under the radar, I think it flies under the radar of a lot of people. And it's simple, man, taking the time every day to to be grateful. Yeah. I, I, I want to take this moment to say thank you to MD, Mohammed, Cleopatra. They're tuning in and they're from Bangladesh, all over the place, man. Your community is incredible. Thank you guys so much for, for your kind words. Uh, terrific show. It inspires. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. And thank you. Exactly. I'm, I'm naming it. Come on, Fonzie. Give me a break here. Man. Yeah. So, again, th thank you, Glenn. Last two questions. Favorite questions. About everything. What is one action point for that entrepreneur that is starting to create, starting to transition from being a consumer to a creator to create that impact? What is something that they can do today uh, to to get that momentum wheel going? Um, I'll give you two things real quick. I'll make them fast. Okay. The the first thing is there's an equation that you need to know, and that equation is it's three parts. Okay. So frequency. Plus proximity equals affinity, not infinity, affinity, A-F-F-I-N-I-T-Y. All right. So what this means is the more frequent you and I can interact, mm -hmm. the closer in proximity of those interactions, as long as the interaction is positive, you will begin to like me more. Period, hands down, there's no way around it. It's psychology, right? So if you and I decide we're going to go, if, if I could decide to go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6.30 in the morning and I go work out and that's the same time that you work out, the workout itself creates a positive endorphin in me. I don't know you from Adam for the first few weeks, mm. but naturally I will start to associate the positive association with you and I will start like giving you head nods in the morning And then head nods become good mornings and good mornings become high fives. And then we figure out what do you do for a living? We start talking about kids yeah. and six months later, we're spotting each other. And we're like workout partners, right? Yeah. Where we're, the same thing happens at work. We don't know people in the beginning, but over time they become lifelong friends, relationships. We get married, whatever, all that stuff. Yeah. It's because frequency plus proximity equals affinity. Online or with your podcast, If you can increase your frequency, the amount of interactions that we have, you can make those close in proximity, which you can't get any closer than this right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is super close, right? The people that watch my show, by the way, I have a very intimate relationship with them because they take me places they would not take their spouse. <laughs> they take me with them in the bathroom. They take me with them in the shower. <laughs> they take me with them everywhere, right? Yeah. So proximity, we got that. Frequency, keep showing up. And the key is to make sure it's always positive. It has to be a net positive, all right? If you're showing up frequently and you're close in proximity and you're an a-hole, then no, I'm not going to like you more. So yeah. make sure it's a net positive. So that's the first thing you need to know. Frequency plus proximity equals affinity. The second thing you need to know is there's four Ps to creating great content. Mm -hmm. 
you're going to want to make sure that you, whether it's posting online or whether it's what you create in your podcast, um, but you want to make sure that you show the personal side of yourself. You want to make sure you show the professional side of yourself. You want to make sure that you deliver purposeful content and purposeful means make me laugh, make me cry, make me feel something as long as it's positive. Don't make me feel negative, but make me feel something. Make me laugh, make me cry, motivate me, inspire me or whatever. And then the fourth is a poll, which means basically ask a question. So it's four P's, right? Personal, professional, purposeful, poll. Those are the four P's of generating incredible content online. Mm -hmm. Now, the last one, you don't necessarily have to use a poll feature, like Facebook has a poll feature. You don't have to do that. It just means ultimately ask a question so that you and I can interact. Don't just talk to me. Give me an opportunity to talk to you so that I can feel like I add value. So online, all I've ever done on Facebook, Instagram, everything, is I just rotate personal post, professional post, purposeful post, poll. Personal post, professional post, purposeful poll, purposeful post, poll. That's all I did for the first couple of years of my social media. And yeah. it blew up, dude. It blew up my engagement. So you pair those two together. Frequency Ooh. plus proximity equals affinity plus the four Ps. Stay consistent with it. You'll be a rock star before you know it. Man, I love it. Pure, pure fire. Pure fire. Yeah. This is what this uh, is what uh, we call hashtag golden boulders yes. right here. Ooh, they're, baby, they're, yeah. they're, they're bigger than golden nuggets we, and better. We, 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 <laughs> we've been requested by some people that are sure that says I got golden boulders. Uh, if if you say yes, we can send one to you. Well, you know we have to make him first, but uh, it's, it's gonna happen. So you know we're taking a poll. Like, would you like a golden boulder shirt? Uh, anyways, so, so I would love a shirt that says I drop golden boulders oh that's good that's good i like that Sounds appreciate it i want to say i have golden boulders i think that <laughs> uh, my skin's a little golden i might get a little a little misleading <laughs> yeah I, li- I like it i dropped i, I, I like drop the, the drop boulders. in there <laughs> Ooh, man, so good glenn that that first equation that you shared it remind reminds me of something that that we share as well that's cons- we say consistency is art Right. And art is an acronym for authority, relevancy and trust. But I love the way how you put it as an equation as you know, frequency and a positive proximity. Right. And that interaction being positive creates that affinity. And then the four elements of content are just absolutely gold. And yeah, I, I want to invite you, the listener, to write them down. If you need to go back a few minutes and listen to it again, do it again write them down mm. and then go to your social media and ask yourself if you're doing the right thing right now. Yes. Len, to boom. wrap up, boom. <laughs> we, we need, we and need. I love oh. how you spoke directly to your hey, you. We, you we ha- are we great ha- students. I appreciate it. I was going to say, we have a great teacher here today with us. <laughs> Glenn, la- last question to wrap up the show is where will you be if you do not publish? Where would I be if I didn't publish? Yes. Well, I would be, it's not really a bad place. It's interesting. I would be at a car dealership in Paris, Kentucky called Dan Cummins Chevrolet and Buick, the second largest used car franchise dealership in America. I would still be there. I was the general manager of that store. I was making great money. And, uh, uh, you know, my wife and I had our seven kids. We've got eight now. And... You know, and to be honest with you, I could have lived that life for the rest of my life. I loved my job. I loved my yeah. boss. I loved everything about it. However, once I felt the tug and I knew what I talked about earlier, like, dude, if Jesus could go through all that and look at the impact he made on me 2,100 years later, cool. what am I doing sitting over here in this comfy, cozy, you know, position? Like, dude, I can help a lot of people. Yeah. And I and and I have to take responsibility for that. I've been given the opportunity and I got to take responsibility for it. So if I would have never done that first episode, I'd still be there. I'd still be there. And nobody would know my name and uh, I'd be slinging cars and, and making an impact in my community. And now I'm making an impact across the planet. And that's the difference. Yes. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Lynn. It really put things into into perspective. Yeah. Um, 
Where where can people find you? Where can people tune into your show? Uh, where can everywhere, people bro. be part of your community? Tell us. We're gonna put away from me. We're gonna we're gonna put all the links right in the description for no, you. Just so go to glennlundy.com. Yes. Everything at glennlundy.com connects to all my social media feeds. Everything. So you can just go to my website, and I would yeah. love to connect with. Awesome. with um, you know, I'd love to connect with you. It'd be amazing. Incredible. Awesome. Thank you so much. Any last thoughts, yeah. Fonzie? No, I'm just thankful. This has been an incredible <laughs> pleasure. Thankful to to you, Glenn, for coming here and sharing, dropping the golden boulders. Uh, thank you yeah. to you, the listener, for sticking here with us and yes. learning as well. And I want to challenge the people, right? Because if we're not learning, uh, we cannot produce content if we're not learning. So today, I'm sure you guys learned something. Well, sorry, you, you, I'm, sorry you. I'm sure you learned something. <laughs> so I want you to share what you learn in social media. Yeah, and tag, tag us at Biz Bros Co. and tag Glenn as well. Uh, Glenn, what is your Instagram so they can tag you? Uh, Instagram is Glenn underscore Lundy. Perfect. Sweet. There we go. All right. Just tag him everywhere. Glenn, any last thoughts before we say bye bye? Thank you. Incredibly grateful for sharing this space and time with me. There's a trillion places you could have been on this planet. And you chose to spend it with me. And I am just completely honored um, that you made that choice. So thank you so much. Ah, thank you, Glenn. All right, guys. All right. All right, you. All right, you. Come on. <laughs> we got this. Thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show at Biz Bros. Go on social media everywhere, too. I, I'm just go also go super confused. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Fine. If you find today's episode impactful, please don't forget to share it. And, and leave a five-star review. Thank you. Bye.